the presentation time is 30 minute please okay. welcome with a huge round of applause Okay, as I said, uh, my name is Phoebe Polk. I'm a senior software engineer at Garden Health. I know this is a Python conference, um, but please allow me a few minutes to talk about Garden Health. Garden Health is a biotechnology company spe specializing in diagnosing can cancer using gene sequencing. Human blood contains lots of RNA and DNA, and that genetic material contains biomarkers. These biomarkers are important to many different diseases. Garden is focused on how these biomarkers help identify strains of, car of cancer. When a pa patient has breast cancer, the next question is, what biomarker caused this breast cancer? In the United States, a doctor can order our Garden 360 test, which helps the doctor identify what bi biomarkers caused the cancer. With this information, the doctor can prescribe the right treatment to the patient to get better results. We call this delivering on the promise of personalized mes medicine. Our Garden 360 test is FDA approved and covered by Medicare. We have submitted our application to the Japanese regulatory authority and are working to make Garden 360 available in Japan. Here, I ask you to help us achieve our mission of early diagnosis for cancer. We are hiring in Japan. Please check out our jobs. Our jobs are at gardenhealth.com backslash careers backslash jobs. Um, on to my talk. My talk is about uh, building PyTest plugins, and my talk has three parts. Part one is understanding PyTest. Part two is my tips for building multiple plugins at a company. And part three is a pitch for why you want to build plugins at your company. So part one, understanding PyTest. What is PyTest? Even if you haven't used PyTest, you have definitely used something similar to PyTest. Whether it's another Python-based testing framework like Nose or Unit Test, or if you're coming from Java or JavaScript, then JUnit or Mocha. In C++, there's even something called Catch, which is a great name for a unit testing framework. There are so many that there is a whole Wikipedia page listing 82 different languages and their associated unit testing frameworks. In linguistics, when you see a pattern in a bunch of languages, that shows there is a common ancestor and some kind of shared origin point. So if we look at object-oriented programming languages, we see that same pattern happening. We can ask, where was the common origin point? Turns out, like so many things, it was Kent Beck's Smalltalk. So Kent Beck created Smalltalk, which was an ancestor to all, all object-oriented programming languages. And Smalltalk had a unit testing framework called SUnit, or Smalltalk Unit. And uh, this is the origin of all of our unit, um, unit testing frameworks. So all of these uh, derivative products ended up being called XUnit type tests. And all XUnit type tests follow the same three basic steps. Step one is discovery, where you d identify your test cases. Step two is execute, and like where you execute your test cases and you result record the results from your test cases. Step three is show, where you present your results. As time has gone by, there have been a couple additional features built into unit testing frameworks, such as so-called generators. Generators uh, generate the inputs for the test before running the tests. And fixtures, setting up or fixing the preconditions of the testing environment before running the tests. So you can see how these features are super useful, which goes to why PyTest is great. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> PyTest is great because it has modular design. What is modular design? It's really easy to recognize, but difficult to describe. I like to think of it as a bundle of sticks. In this metaphor, each stick is a mo module, and PyTest is the string that you bind the sticks together with. You can either accept the default version of PyTest, which comes with the base set of modules, or you can add new modules, and PyTest will just tie those new modules into the bundle. 
modular design wasn't tacked on to PyTest Py in a later iter iteration of PyTest. Modularity is PyTest. So I'm going to try and show you what I mean. Um, I don't know if this is going to be possible. <sighs> so you might have to take my word for it. Um, oh, no. Can you see my screen? Nope. Okay. I'm going to give up on that. <laughs> okay. So I have, I, I've created a virtual environment. And inside that virtual environment, there's nothing but um, PyTest installed. But when you install PyTest and you go to the site packages for PyTest and you open up the, the PyTest module, there are only two files inside of the PyTest module. The first one is a dunder init, and the second one is a dunder main. So you're thinking, maybe PyTest is this giant spaghetti code. So you open up dunder main, and you see three lines of code. The first line of code <laughs> is to import PyTest. Well, <laughs> why would the dunder main <laughs> of PyTest be to import PyTest? That's weird. <laughs> then the second line is to run the main <laughs> on PyTest. So you're running the main, you, then you're importing PyTest, then you're running the main again. <laughs> That's really weird. <laughs> so <laughs> where is the actual code for PyTest? It's not in the PyTest library. It's actually in this other library, the Dunder PyTest library. Sure enough, when you open up the Dunder PyTest, all of a sudden you see PyTest code. Well, what happens when you import PyTest is it does this weird thing where it creates a fake module, and then uh, it does, uh, like, it searches through the local context, and it uh, adds all of the attributes into PyTest at runtime. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> Let's walk through a simple vanilla PyTest execution. So when you run pytest.main, as we have established, um, pytest.main imports pytest. Importing pytest executes the dunder init for the module, which then searches the name namespace for all the module attributes and, uh, and adds them to a new fake pytest module, that <laughs> then runs pytest main. Uh, then this PyTest main, which was, wasn't present in, in the PyTest module, it's in, actually in the Dunder PyTest module, starts a standard X unit discovery, execute, and show process for executing the core test, uh, PyTest functions. Discovery is when, uh, in PyTest, uh, is called PyTest underscore collection, where, it, where test case, cases are called either nodes or items, and they are all added to this thing called the test loop. So collection involves finding all of the test cases and adding them to the test loop. Execution is when every item in the test loop goes through the setup, call, and teardown methods. So um, this is the test execution in PyTest. Finally, show is when the test report object is printed into the terminal. That's when you get a fancy report in your terminal. At this point, I've talked about all the parts to a PyTest plugin without using the correct names, basically. So in PyTest, all of the things with PyTest underscore um, in it, such as PyTest underscore collections, PyTest underscore run test loop, PyTest um, uh, underscore summary report are called hooks, which are these methods on the fake PyTest class following the um, PyTest underscore naming convention. There's an entire section on PyTest.org about how, how these work, um, and I've gone on about them. <laughs> then there are the fixtures. Fixtures are a flexible class for generating or storing values that can be used in test cases. Then uh, I'll, I'll go into a, a very interesting example of that later. Um, finally, there's the command line interface, or the pytest.ini file, which is, creates the configuration of the pytest before the, for execution. Lastly, there's 
Sometimes you can just write a Python module that has only has real meaning within the context of your test suite or your test environment, but isn't a hook or a fixture. That PyTest module, Python module, can be located inside a PyTest plugin and can be bundled into PyTest. That's what I call other. <laughs> it's just a normal PyTest module that just happens to be a PyTest plugin. Finally, uh, part two, what are my tips for building a PyTest plugins? Well, my pr first tip, because everything has to start with zero, is tip zero. There are 983 sticks already in existence to add to your bundle. Don't recreate something if you don't have to. <laughs> These are the list of plugins available on PyTest, and maybe what you want is already in existence. <laughs> um, tip number one is if you're building a PyTest plugin, use cookie cutter templating. Cookie cutter is a templating system created by Audrey Roy Greenfield. You install cookie cutter by running pip install pu cookie cutter and it shows up as a command line tool where you can provide it a template and it will generate a project for you. The templates are either local in GitHub um, or uh, local or in GitHub. So uh, which template should you use? You should use the one called cookie cutter dash pytest dash plugin. Uh, it was created by Raphael Pierzina and it's pretty simple to use. All you have to do is cookie cutter space the name of the repo, um, which is too long to say right now. Uh, what I like about this template is that, that, that it is that it produces a fully functional plugin. And you can see that plugin uh, th that when you're running the tests. Uh, you can run this cookie cutter and then uh, CD into that newly formed directory and just type in talks and it will run all of your tests. The, uh, what I also like about this uh, cookie cutter is that it will show you a lot of basic reference code that you need to get started with Python, uh, Python in PyTest plugins. The first of which is this add option, which uh, adds a command line argument to a pass a setting or value in your run. You can also modify the config either with a command line options or by adding a value to the INI. However, this template doesn't really work for every environment. Uh, first off, the template by default creates this thing called an appfair.yaml. Um, and I don't use appfair.yaml. <laughs> There's all, it also uses a setup.py. So if you want to use pyproject.toml, you're out of luck. Uh, next, it, it only has documentation through make docs or sphinx docs. So if you want to use pdocs or something else, it's not available. So that goes to if you are going to do a lot of PyTest plugins in your company, then don't just use the cookie cutter. Build your own cookie cutter. That's what I did at Gardent. I built my own cookie cutter that uses poetry in pyproject.toml. And, a ver and also allows you to use very specific versions of PyTest and PIP and Python to generate the plugin project directory exactly the way you need it and configure it as you like. So um, tip number two is to use PyTester. So PyTester is a great example of a fixture. Basically, how fixtures work in PyTest is the very first thing you, you do is you add uh, PyTest underscore plugin equals PyTester to your conftest.py, and you set the value of, you know, after you add PyTester in your conftest.py, it allows um, Python to add the PyTester stick to the bundle. Uh, PyTester gives you access to this thing called testdir. And testdir is a temporary directory with helper methods that mimic running PyTest in that temporary directory. To see that in action, you can, uh, I had an example, but I can't show it. Um, basically, you uh, use test, uh, let me see if I can.
so test dir dot make pi file and then you enter in uh, triple quotes a example test case like test underscore two plus two and then you can assert simple things and it will create that test file inside of your temporary directory. The next method on tester is tester.runpyTest. RunPyTest will run PyTest inside of the tester, like inside the temporary directory created by tester on the temporary file that you just created with makePyFile. Tester run pi test returns a result result that is uh, actually a a sub process um, like a, like a, a process object that has a standard out and standard error um, so that enables you to uh, to run pi test in a test environment. Finally, that result object with the standard out and standard error will have a um, assertion method called fn match lanes. fn match underscore lines. fn match underscore lines is a regulatory regular expression which takes a a uh, match statement and and searches the standard out for the match statement. Um, that allows you to see whether or not pytest is generating the output you want from the inputs that you're providing. That's pretty helpful for a plugin, basically. Um, finally, tip number three is that PyTest plugins are packages, and packages should follow good packaging practice. To help you out, I have made this handy little checklist I encourage you to take pictures of the screen right now if you want to, or check it out later. But it's pretty simple. When you're creating a package, you want to follow the basics of standard good packaging practice. Version control, a readme with explanations of usage examples, how to run the test, how to contribute your code, docs, doc string coverage, pin dependencies, release notes, change histories, pre-commits hooks, lock down that main branch, tag your releases, and require code reviews before accepting commits into main. <laughs> so a PyTest plugin should behave exactly like a, a well-created Python package. In conclusion, why you should care. Why you should care is because uh, when you're creating a product, and especially when you're creating a product where the users are going to be developers, you don't just want to make it easy to use the product, you want to make it easy to test that product. A good example of this is AWS releasing Modo alongside Bodo. Modo is the mocked out version of Bodo. By releasing them together, it allows users, developers, to build their services on Modo and then directly transfer that to Bodo. That little courtesy allows you, it makes your service so much better to use and to interact with. I actually did this in my company. I built Docker microservices, like Docker containers with microservices. And then I also created PyTest plugins, which um, would mimic the behaviors of the, dicro, the, of the microservice. That allowed our team to test our service with, against the PyTest plugin and then directly translate it into uh, at, like, to interactions with the microservice. So, in fact, it's actually not that much work to create a plugin alongside a service because you're building, it, it, it's, not, it's actually not that much, much work to create a plugin alongside your service because if you're building in a test-driven development way, which you, where you're writing tests and you're, as you're building, your product, you can actually just copy the fixtures in your confstest.py when you are done and transfer them into a PyTest plugin. And uh, that, uh, like, uh, you can just copy them from your confstest.py, place them into the PyTest plugin package generated by your cookie cutter, and then 
hit commit. <laughs> now, write some tests, hit commit, and then all of a sudden you have a package that you can then uh, distribute to everybody and make it really easy for everybody on your team to build something that uses your service. I'd like to thank everybody for helping me out. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Brian Aukin for writing the book Python Testing with PyTest, which has inspired me every day, alongside uh, Mark Rice, Abel, James Abel, Grace Law, and Moshe Zaika. Thank you so much, Python, PyCon Japan. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for your presentations. And um, I guess there is no question. And I'm sorry for the audio interruptions on the streaming video. So everybody, please give a huge round of applause for Febesan. If you have any questions or would like to talk to the speaker directly, please go to the hallway open space. Speakers will be around. So we ask for your cooperation not gathering around the stage. Sponsor will have their own booth, so which we encourage you to visit all participants who have purchased ticket can also participate in the sticker rally at the sponsor booth. If you have collected the specified number of tickets, you can extend them with the t-shirt. Thank you very much.